Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another first impressions video. In today's first impressions video, we're going to be taking a look at this really, really tiny little pistol, which is the 950 BS Beretta Jetfire. I have always been extremely interested in these little micro Beretta pistols. I always just thought they were so cool, and to be honest with you, I always thought the quality level was pretty high. I originally saw this come through the gun shop that I work at in the used section. In doing some research online and looking at the reviews and looking at the forums, I really had a hard time finding any negative information out there in regards to this pistol. Now you guys know I have had a ton of issues in the past with small pocket pistols. And it's to the point where pretty much if I see a used pocket pistol come my way, I will do a test. And that test is just firing a box of 50 rounds. And if it can make it through that box of 50 rounds with no malfunctions, I will buy it. And I will start considering testing it and carrying it in that niche pocket roll. Did I do that test on this little Beretta 950 Jetfire? And was it reliable? Did it succeed? I will say I shot a box of 50 through it and it was not 100%. I did have one failure to feed. I was super let down. I'm like, oh man, all the reviews said this little pistol was so reliable. What happened? What went down? And I just did some research online. The only negative issues I ever found were failures to feed. I found one other video on YouTube that did have some failure to feed issues and I did see some failure to feed issues online. I quickly found that the solution to all those failure to feed issues was simply the magazine. Now the magazine in this gun is definitely old. It is unmarked, so it could be an aftermarket magazine. I was really going back and forth in my head on whether I was going to actually purchase this pistol or if I was simply gonna pass it by because it did not pass the test. Well, obviously, since you see it here in front of me, I did end up purchasing this pistol. And I also bought a new Beretta manufactured magazine. You can see right away the differences in the magazine is pretty dramatic. You have some text here that's on the Beretta magazine, no text on this one. This one has more of a Parkerized finish. The old one does not. And then also the follower on the Beretta magazine is stainless and quite a bit more smooth. The old magazine just has this kind of uh, rough black follower on the end. I was pleasantly surprised that when I took it to the range today with the new magazine, I fired 100 rounds without issue. The reason I'm so pumped up about that is because no other pocket pistol that I have ever tried has made it to that with no issues. And I know that seems pretty insane, but you guys have to understand it's very, very difficult to make a gun this small that can literally fit in the palm of my hand and still make it reliable. It fired through 100 rounds of this American Eagle 50 grain full metal jacket with no issues. From there, I actually was immediately putting it into a defensive role. That was really the test that I wanted it to go through and it passed with flying colors. Now, normally I would shoot many more rounds through a defensive pistol before I put it in that role. But with a pocket gun like this, the fact that it was able to do something that no other pocket pistol that I have tried was able to do was why I had no issue at all in immediately putting it in a defensive role. I actually pocket carried this pistol today with me at the gym and while I was actually skateboarding outside to do a couple of tests and see how it performed in the pocket and I had no issues. I was carrying full metal jacket ammunition because in doing some quick, quick Google searches, you guys can see that penetration on 25 ACP is pretty poor. It by no means is a great defensive caliber, but I will say if you do end up carrying it, hollow points got dramatically less penetration than full metal jackets. So on the contrary to every other full-size pistol that you would generally carry, in this particular gun, you would actually have more benefit to load full metal jacket round nose ball than you would actually loading hollow points. Another plus side to this tiny little gun is the lack in recoil. The 25 ACP is basically a 22 long rifle with a center fire primer in it. So it's going to have 22 like recoil and I definitely enjoyed shooting it at the range. And really, the accuracy that I got out of the pistol at five and even 25 yards was not bad at all. I think at 25 yards, I got about a five to six inch group. 
which for a 2.5 inch barrel and a small little gun like this, I was pretty proud of that. And at five yards, I was getting about a two inch group. In rapid fire, you will quickly find that the trigger in the Beretta 950 is awesome and the reset is even better. You have a small amount of take up and then you hit a pretty crisp wall. That wall is gonna stop and you will get a crisp break. Once you get that break, your reset is gonna be right about there and there's not really any take up after that reset. It's just gonna be your break again. It is definitely not a hair trigger, but it's not bad at all. I would say it reminds me of your base entry level 1911. Some other features on this little gun is the awesome cool factor of the tip up barrel. And you'll notice this lever here and you're actually gonna press that lever all the way forward. In pressing it all the way forward, you'll notice that your barrel actually tips up. So in order to make this pistol much, much easier to use, you can simply just tip your barrel up, drop your cartridge in the barrel, close the barrel and load your magazine, cock the hammer, put your safety on and you are ready to go. The other interesting thing about this gun is that it's just straight blowback. So there's really not much that can go wrong. You'll notice that there's no extractors at all. It's just a flat surface where your firing pin engages. Your magazine release on the pistol is going to be on the lower right hand corner of the grip. And normally on a full size pistol, this would actually be pretty hard to get to. But since this gun is so small, I find that I don't even really have to change my grip that much to hit the magazine release. All I have to do is simply move my thumb down, hit the magazine release, and the magazine is going to come out. Another reason that Beretta decided to put the magazine release where they did is so that you would not accidentally hit the magazine release, causing the magazine to fall out prematurely. You'll notice that in this position, if I'm gripping the pistol fully, I get nowhere near this magazine release. Even if I'm gripping the gun with both hands, I really never get near it, and I didn't have any issues with the magazine accidentally dropping out at the range. The one thing you will notice if you're used to shooting full-size guns when you go over to this pistol is that you will have to adjust your grip slightly to ensure that it will not have a malfunction and that you do not hit any of the controls and to really be safe. Your standard grip on a pistol, a semi-automatic pistol, would be both thumbs forward, high up, choking up on the gun. And you'll notice that we already have some issues here. My thumb is pretty much on the barrel when I go ahead and do this, and it's right up in the front. That's absolutely not safe. And you'll notice also that my thumbs are riding against the slide. The fact that they're riding against the slide means that this could potentially cause a malfunction from putting too much pressure on a slide that's already moving pretty slow. On top of that, you'll notice also that the hammer is pretty much in the web of my hand. I learned out quickly in the first 50 rounds that this can absolutely cause hammer bite. So what you're gonna have to end up doing is gripping slightly lower than you normally would and curling your thumbs in like you're shooting a revolver. This is going to allow you to clear the slide completely, not hit the safety, and also not get hammer bite. I really didn't have too much of a learning curve. It really just took one box to start getting the hang of how to shoot this gun. And after I really learned that and started doing draws from the pocket, it got much easier and I really had no issues in doing it. I would probably not carry the Beretta just in your pocket without a holster. In some tighter jeans, you can definitely see some printing that it is quite obviously a small gun in your pocket. But aside from that, I like using the pocket holster to make sure that the gun is oriented properly in my pocket and that it has not turned in a direction that I don't want it to be in. So that way, if I did have to draw it, it's going to be in the same position every time I go in my pocket. The only downfall about these pocket holsters is that as you can see, there's absolutely no retention in the holster. So this is not something that you're gonna be able to tip upside down and, and make sure it does not fly out of your pocket. You will have to keep tabs on it if you are wearing the holster in gym shorts or sweatpants or something like that, just simply to make sure that you don't turn a certain way or lift your leg too high and make the gun actually fall out of your pocket. If you are carrying this in jeans or something like that, you should have enough pressure in the jeans to actually hold the gun in a solid position the whole time. And that's pretty much gonna wrap this video up, guys. I'm super impressed with this little pistol. It's been diehard reliable. I love the cool factor of it, and I think Beretta did a great job. Unfortunately, they no longer manufacture these, so you would have to find one on the used market, 
but you can generally find them for about $230 to $250. And quite honestly, that's about the same price as an LCP, and this seems to be much more reliable with a much better track record. If you guys have any further information or any other questions that you would like to get across that I didn't touch in this video, please feel free to put them down below in the comments section, and I absolutely will get back to you. Also, while you're down there, go ahead and check out the links to my Firearm Freedom Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram account. We do daily posts on all three of those, so whatever social media platform you are on, you'll be able to see some awesome daily gun content. While you're at it, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell if you enjoy the content that comes out here on the Firearm Freedom Official YouTube channel. We post about four videos a month, and I love seeing this Firearm Freedom family grow. Thank you guys so much for watching, and stay tuned for more great videos to come soon.